Okay, this is video number three. This goes along with uh, lesson 11-2 out of your book. It's about chords and arcs, and it's got um, a lot of theorems. If you look, they've got listed one, two, three, four, five theorems, uh, but to me, all of them are pretty much common sense type of theorems, and uh, several of them work forwards and backwards. Uh, the other thing you'll notice when you start doing the problems is you're going to feel like you're in the last unit because you're going to see right triangles and Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean triples pop up all over the place. Uh, and I'll do an example uh, of that towards the end. But let me go through the ideas really quickly. The first theorem has got three parts to it, but it has to do with uh, within a circle or if you've got two different circles that are congruent, which means they have the same uh, radius. Congruent central angles have congruent chords. So if you'll take a look at the board here, we've got angle one and angle two. So if they are congruent, that means a couple of things. That would also mean that the arcs, arc AB, would be congruent to arc CD. That would also mean that the chords, if I were to connect and have segment AB, would also be congruent to segment CD. So all three of those parts are kind of interchangeable, and that's what they're trying to get across there in Theorem 11.4. So if you've got congruent angles, central angles, that means the arcs are going to be congruent and the chords are going to be congruent as well. Okay, so pretty easy idea there. The next one is talking about chords being equidistant from the center. Okay, so once again, you can either have two congruent circles or within one circle. It says chords that are equidistant from the center are congruent. Okay, and the second part says congruent chords are equidistant from the center. So it's working forwards and backwards on that one. Uh, if you think about what that means, first of all, we need to remember what equidistant is. How would we measure the distance from the center point to that chord? Well, it would have to be the perpendicular segment. Okay, same thing there. So if uh, segment UT is congruent to segment RS. So if the chords are congruent and you measure this distance and this distance, it would have to be congruent as well. They're equidistant from the center. Likewise, if you know that these two segments <coughs> excuse me, are congruent, that would prove that uh, the chords are congruent as well. Okay, and you're going to see pictures like this. Hey, guess what we have? A right triangle. Uh, like I said, you're going to see that almost on a daily basis. All right, and then the last idea, uh, similar to it, says that if you've got a circle, a diameter that's perpendicular to the chord, so if you've got a chord and we have a diameter that's perpendicular to it, it bisects the chord and its arcs. So that means that these two small segments would be congruent. We could prove it by making uh, right triangles and proving those congruent. It would also mean that these two arcs are congruent. Okay, this arc and this arc. So basically your diameter uh, bisects, if it's perpendicular to your chord, it bisects the chord and it bisects the arcs. Okay, so that takes care of your theorem ideas. And then I wanna do an example. Um, I'm actually gonna do one off of a little study guide sheet that you're gonna get because they're a little bit tougher because they're, they explain the problem but they don't show you the picture. So a lot of the ones out of your book actually give you the picture. But I'm gonna look at number four on the study guide page and you should uh, have that uh, when you take a look at the video. It says, suppose a chord is 20 inches long and is 24 inches from the center of the circle. Find the length of the radius. Well, how should you draw it? You should draw it so that it makes a right triangle every single time uh, almost in this lesson. Okay, so we've got a chord that's 20 inches long. We know that. And we know that it is 24 inches from the center. So when you start talking about that distance, you've got to make it perpendicular. We know that's 24. And my picture's not the scale, so don't let that confuse you. The question is, what's the radius? Well, should you draw the radius here? Could you draw it here? You could draw any of them, but the one that you need is the one that makes the right triangle, okay? And then also don't forget that last theorem we just talked about, it splits that 20 in half. So our 20 is now gonna be 10 and 10, and then we can use Pythagorean theorem there to get the radius. 
So 10 squared plus 24 squared equals R squared, and that would allow you to uh, figure out what the radius is. Okay, so you're going to see this picture a lot. Always try to make a right triangle whenever you have the opportunity. Okay, that takes care of it for lesson 11-2. Uh, and then next time we'll talk about 11-3, uh, which starts to get into angle measurements instead of side lengths, which is what we've been talking about.